In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, he's coming back. He's coming back. Jesus is coming. And if you're not ready, you should be worrying. But you can make it right. Thank you, choir. Amen. I said you can make it right tonight. You can be buried in the waters of baptism. Born again of water and spirit. Someone said, are you telling me I have to be born again? I'm not telling you. But Jesus did. If you want to argue with him up at judgment, that's up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and just obey. I said, I'm just going to go ahead and obey. Because I want to be saved. At the end of the journey, it really isn't that why we're here. We want to be saved. I said, isn't that really all that matters? Life, James says, is but a vapor. Present and then gone. After having acquired all things, accumulated all the riches and relationships that man could aspire to, the wealthiest of all men said, it's but vanity. The older I get, the more I, I can echo that. You know what I mean? It's like, just what's it really all about? So tonight I don't want to preach to you a little bit, perhaps more serious than I'd like to in my flesh, but a reminder, simple sermon from many years ago, the Lord can't release out of my spirit, Luke 9, 16 and 19. Luke 16 and 19, familiar reading, if uh, we will read the entire passage, if it's too much you can be seated, if not remain standing, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abram's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But but Abram said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he's comforted, thou art tormented. Besides all this, between us and you there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Hell could look up into paradise, but he couldn't access it. And those in paradise didn't even know he was there then he said I pray thee this is the poor the rich man in the torments of hell he said I pray thee therefore father that thou would ascend him to my father's house I have five brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment and this rich man did in eternity what he failed to do in time what we all will do he prayed I want to talk to you for a few minutes about that, a prayer request from hell. I've given you the statistics before, perhaps, I can't remember, but as a reminder, there are 8 billion people that populate the planet Earth. As of last year, the statistics are that 51,228,787 died. If we were to divide that down, it would make 4,252,399 souls that die monthly. That's 978,362 people that die every single week. It's 189,805 people that die on planet Earth every day. 5,825 people, young people, die every hour. It's 97 every minute. According to the research of my Bible school professor, Dr. Talmadge French, there are approximately 25 million oneness believers worldwide. While studying for this, I took into account that that was almost 20 years ago. So I said 30 million people that are oneness just believe in singular that Jesus Christ is one God. So if we are to say that every person that believes that God is one and that it is Jesus is saved, it would make a, a fifth of a single percentage point of the entire world's population that's saved. One fifth of a single point is saved. In other words, from the time I started my sermon, or I was up here five minutes ago, we're right at 500 deaths already. There's one-fifth of a point percentage that one of them was saved. I 
know we shout and dance, but it's definitely something we need to talk about. For there's no movement on the planet increasing at the rate at which hell is. The Bible says that it hath expanded itself. On this Sunday night, it is with sadness that I report to you, hell is having revival. Society today has made hell a curse word. It's just a, a joke. It's something that we laugh about and play with, mock and take lightly, soothing our conscience, just using it as a word to emphasize a negative situation. My life's a living hell. My marriage is hell. And we use it just to emphasize something bad to make it sound even, even worse. Christianity has placed a giant do not touch sign on the subject. It's off limits. Preaching what I preached to you tonight doesn't make you popular. It sure doesn't make you famous. Laity doesn't want to hear about it with a grim. They're too troubled in a troubled world. Why burden them with more? Christianity feels guilty preaching about a subject Jesus Christ talked on twice as much as he did heaven. So it's not easy, it's not desirable, but I do have to remind you, as it is my task to remind you, that there is a hell. And while I love being preached to and having my mind blown and my ears tickled, there does come a time where I have to have my heart pricked. And I, I've got to tell somebody, it's more than a joke. It's not just a curse word, and it's more than a word we use to emphasize a negative situation. It's real. It's a place. And it's having the greatest revival known to human history. Revelation 22 and 10 speaks of it in the last part of that verse. He says, And he was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Eternity, Tex. No time. There's no mathematical equation or earthly parable that I can relate to you that will allow our human finite minds to understand eternity. Someone once tried to use the illustration, and they said if the sun were a giant ball of iron and a small sparrow made an annual journey from earth to the sun and once rubbed its wing annually against the sun and returned only to do it the next year by the time the brushing of that little sparrow's wing had withered that ball of iron the size of the sun into nothing eternity will have just begun no time it, while that's a great illustration perhaps and trying to allow our minds to wrap itself around something incomprehensible as time eternity it is still impossible to us for Everything we are is defined by time. It's set by time. Time is what binds us, and time is what sets us free. We are all prisoners to this thing called time. Having a bad day at the job, boss, man hitting you pretty hard, hold on. Just wait till the clock hits five. And the same time that holds you prisoner will once again be there to liberate you young people bad day at school just keep your eye on the clock she drones on but tick 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 and a bell will ring and you'll be set free from the prison of school time it held you prisoner but it was also there to save you in the same manner some of you aren't enjoying the message tonight but the clock will turn red I'll stop and you'll leave and you can go back to living your life in time you can't get out of it you're captured by it a prisoner to it even the psalmist was aware of it for he said weeping may endure for a night he said but there's salvation in time anybody know what I'm talking about weeping endures for, and that's why you told your neighbor just hold on what are you holding on for time just give it some time Time will heal it, they tell you. And weeping endures for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Uh, though I am sorrowful and I toss and I turn and I can't sleep, I, I look at the clock knowing that at 5.45 I'll start to see daybreak and, and there will be fresh dew uh, that on that grass and, and there will be part hope for the parchness of my soul. Time, it's always been there. It's always been there. It's always set me free. And so it is impossible, humanly inconceivable, to be able to understand a place without it. Eternity. No sunrise, no sunset, 
no dew on the grass, no, sun, no hope, no time, eternity, forever. Everything heaven is, hell is not. The Bible says that there will be gnashing of teeth there. There will be terror there. There will be loneliness. And it will be forever, never fading. There will be darkness there forever. Wailing forever. Weeping forever. But we can't comprehend forever. If man could comprehend forever, all a preacher would have to do is say that after life there's a timeless place of darkness that if you do not believe in God, you will go to. And we wouldn't have a building of 500. We would have coliseums filled with masses if we understood forever. All you would have to say is there's a place after life that eternally, will, without ending, will go on and on with demons as your companion, as your body shakes for fear forever. And they would run to the altar. It wouldn't be with petitions pleading and begging uh, we wouldn't have to have five minutes of at pushed prayer but but they would pray uh, we would cry uh, we would we would call out to God if we understood forever demons as companions uh, and you beg for relief for death to save you only to discover you're immortal the flesh burns from your body only to be replaced with new They'll bite at your flesh, the Bible says. Filth, worms eating at your body forever. But you can't comprehend it. It's incomprehensible, and you will beg. They will beg in this place for a sunrise to, sunrise to save them. For, for surely I'll wake up and the alarm clock will disturb the, the darkness that I'm in. But, but there will be no alarm clocks. There will be no sunrise. There will be no end because you are in a place with no end. You're in eternity. Just a drop. He said, just, just a drop, but, but there's no dew on the grass uh, to parch the burning of my soul. Uh, the terror of the place is forever, uh, but I don't know what forever is. Uh, I don't know what forever is. Uh, the clawing, the gnashing, the biting, the burning. Oh, preachers, be quiet. You're going to scare him. Little Pookie, he's going to have nightmares. You're going to make him scared. Last time I checked, Hollywood's not holding back. Last time they're not asking for permission to put things on your kids' screens and they're not asking for your authority. Come on. Uh, no, 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 no. Last time I checked, they've got... They've got ratings on video games. There's filth pouring out of that stuff uh, that's supposed to be pure and innocent, uh, promoting homosexuality, promoting gender dysphoria, promoting sex before marriage and fornication. The, the games aren't Mr. and Mrs. Pac-Man anymore. It's, come on, it's blood and murder and demons and dungeons. Uh, come on, we are literally in a war of nuclear warfare. Hell is attacking our generation with nuclear bombs. Come on, come on, moms and dad. I said hell is attacking us this generation with nuclear warfare and we want clergy to rise up and say oh grace and goo goo and gaga and la la and it's okay do whatever you want but but I'm sorry I'm tired of my ears being pricked I'm being tickled in my heart not being pricked so my job is not to make you feel good my job is to tell you the truth and the truth is young man and young lady you don't want to be lost you don't want to go to hell you don't want to fool around and you need to stop You've got to stop fooling around with the world. You got to stop playing games. It's time to come on. It's time to get off. Yes, I'm going to get up and say there's only one way to be saved. That you've got to be buried in the waters of baptism. In the name of Jesus, yes. We're going to say you'll speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives. Yes, there's going to be some restrictions on how we date. Yes, we're going to tell young people, you don't have sex before marriage. We don't have oral sex before marriage. Sexting is sex. Oh, oh boy, you're going to, come on, you're, they're talking about it, but I've got to, come on. So let me just tell you what the truth is, and the truth is, that's wrong. It's not right. Turn the, these a little bit. I said, it's not right. Oh, preacher, you're just so strict. 
you're so strict you're so we need a, you need to be a little more flexible no that's not what the world needs the world does not need more flexible men that won't take a stand for anything what the world needs and what our young people need is a man that'll rise up and define righteousness and unrighteousness godliness and ungodliness the church isn't where you come just to feel good and you leave when you feel bad church is what saves you from hell this it's not a game it's not about Republicans and Democrats. It's not about Muslims versus Christians. This isn't about liberal versus conservative. This isn't about modern songs versus old songs. This is about heaven and hell. Say it again. It's about heaven. Bring my monitors down. Or hell. I'll say it again. What we do in this house is about your eternal soul. I'm going to pick that church because it makes me feel good. Oh, God, no, it's about eternity. Don't you let your feelings take you to hell. Don't you let somebody's bitter spirit take you to hell. What will men give in exchange? Hold up whatever bitterness you've got in your heart. Hold up whatever anger you've got in heart. Hold up your little issue up against eternity measure whatever it is that's got you all up in a wad and hold it up against eternity and I want you to measure it out does it matter it doesn't matter all that matters is I must be saved I must be saved I don't care what happened I don't care what they said the question is do you want to go to hell over it no I will be saved the first question from Satan's lips to man, his words were a question. Did God not say, you better watch out who you hang out with? Well, where, where does it say that in the Bible? People that know better. People raised in this thing. Well, where does it say in the Bible you, you, you should, a, a, a woman should look like a woman? Well, I don't know. I think that's just the preacher's ideas. I think that's him just making up. Come on, somebody. And you question every little thing. They question holiness. They question righteous living. They question then it'll be the way we worship. Come on. You watch me. I'm preaching to you. It starts with a few little questions about how we dress and little questions about what we wear. And then it's questions about, well, I don't know why he preaches against going to the movie houses. And I don't know why he preaches against going to professional ball games. And I don't, just measure it up against eternity. I want you to measure it up against eternity. Then you know what you start questioning? You start saying, well, does it really take all that clapping? Does it really take all that dancing? Does it really take all that shouting? Then you know what's next? Does it take Jesus' name baptism? Is it really important that we speak in tongues? I don't think that's all that important either. Next thing you do, you don't believe anything. And it started with a question. Young people, if your friends in this house are questioning this truth, you say, get out of it. I rebuke you, Satan. There is nothing more satanic than questioning God's holy word. Come on, young people. And if somebody asks you, where in the Bible does it say that you shouldn't cut your hair? You ought to know where it says it. First Corinthians 11. When it says, where does it say that a woman shouldn't wear that which pertains to a man? You should know where it says it. And then you should make some friend choices. Well, you're being strict. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're being hard. No, I'm not. You know what's hard? Sin. You know what's hard? Hell. I said hell is hard. Sin is hard. Sin is hard. Hell is hard. So we need a generation of young people and a generation of preachers that will rise up and say hell is real. It's filthy. It's lonely. It's dark. It's burning. It's biting. It's hurting. It's screaming. It's terror forever forever but you can't comprehend that you can't comprehend it or I wouldn't have even got this far into my message if you really understood it I see you, your eyes keep spinning to the clock it's okay it'll be there for you it's always got you out it's going to come and save you in just a minute 
But for a few more minutes, you're going to have to hear. Just a few more minutes, you're going to have to hear about a place I can, I think we can all agree is going to be a bad place. Do I need to go back? Or can we agree that flames lapping the immortal flesh from your body while being bitten, worms eating at your flesh for continual process, falling in the terror of darkness uh, with demons as companions, as wails and screams cry, is can we agree that that is going to be horrific? However, while we agree that it's horrific, it's not the worst thing about being in this place. The worst part about being lost will be when you do what the rich man did. You lift up your eyes, Joey. They'll lift up their eyes. You know what he's going to see? You know what they're going to see? The Bible says he looked up and he saw Paris. He's... I, you're going to see me. I'm, on, I'm not going to be in hell. You're going to see me bumping into Brother Joey saying, Yo, bro, what's going on? We made it. Yeah. Have you seen the streets? They're gold just like he said they were. Have you seen walls, Joey? Have you been over this wall? Have you been to my wall? Come check it out. It's Jasper. Have you been through the gates, Joey? They're, they're pearl. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be worth it. Is it worth it, Joey? Is it worth every mile? Is it worth every sacrifice? Was it worth it? Come on, get to church on a Sunday night, dancing on your feet when they hurt. Was it worth it living holy? Oh, we're going to, oh, won't we have a time when we get over yonder we're gonna sing and shout and dance about when we get over yonder we're gonna run and shout in joy in bliss forever and forever forever you watch as you look at us knowing there's no recollection that you ever existed in time forever forever we dance while you watch haunted by something greater than the flames you're mine you're mine for while we have forgotten you remember well every sermon you heard every petition and plea you disregarded every follow up call you pushed the red button on every altar call you call I know you can't remember them now but I promise you you'll remember them then you'll remember a a, a young preacher pastor that was preaching a message on a Sunday night uh, that he didn't want to preach in his flesh Uh, you'll remember when he came by your life uh, and walked down your aisle uh, looked you in the eye and said live for God Uh, live for God Uh, live for God Uh, you'll you'll remember what you did on this night sitting callous and hard once again uh, living giving another excuse uh, as to why you did not have to forgive the person why you did not have to make it right with God why you were too holy you didn't have to respond to the altar you'll remember forever it'll echo through your mind forever 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 but you don't understand you can't understand forever I say the worst thing about going to hell is knowing you didn't have to go there I said the worst thing about being lost is knowing I didn't have to be lost You don't have to be lost. I ask you, I ask you tonight, if God, if God in his loving mercy on this Sunday night could reach down into Vider, Texas, and if he could, if he could take somebody from hell, if he could just reach down into hell and the torments of flame that they're in and he could extrapolate one human being from that place and place them on Main Street, Vider, Texas. What do you think they would do if he gave them one more hour? What would they do with one more? Let me tell you what they wouldn't do. They wouldn't check the sports scores. They wouldn't care about what Vider Talks was saying. They wouldn't check to see who was up in the the polls. They they wouldn't check the latest gossip. or They wouldn't run to the ATM to see how much money they had left. They wouldn't check on the latest models of cars or see the latest fashions. 
who the latest stars are would matter nothing to them but but in my mind's eye I see it whether male or female I don't know for the flames have lapped its body to where it's just charred that dangles from bones I see it I see it on Main Street no one will give it a ride cars are running into each other as they turn to stare in disgust but it's not been still since it's been dropped it's been running every step a little flesh falls off but it runs regardless of what the stairs it's running it's running it's running it's running it's running I see it the direction now it's coming our way where will he go in my imagination I see it walk no it's running again right there it's headed it's headed here yeah the only place that mattered the doors will burst open the stench of this thing will fill this room all of us turn and we stare at it one begins to talk to another mothers cover their children's eyes screams some flee the rebuilding but it doesn't care that people look at it. It's opinions of people matter nothing to this thing. All that matters is one thing. And I, I can make out what once were cheeks. And I see tears. And they're streaming down it as it runs down that, that aisle. It doesn't wait for an altar call. It doesn't need to be begged to the front. Uh, but I see it as it throws itself on this altar. Its voice begins to shred the air. Oh, God! Whatever you do, God, I don't want to be lost. I God want to be saved Lord whatever you do you've got to save me don't send me back to that place don't send me back I'll give what you want me to give I'll go where you want me to go I'll live how you want me to live there's no price but whatever you do God whatever you do whatever you do whatever you do whatever I've got to do don't don't send me back I'm sorry God I'm sorry that I couldn't forgive I'm sorry God that I wouldn't let bitterness go I'm sorry God forgive me and as it begins to repent of its sins, I watch the mercy of God, which is bound by its love and law of its word, and it sweeps over. And this thing stands up trembling, and the tears now flow like river, and the tongue begins to cease speaking English, and it opens up and begins to speak in a language not known to man or hell from whence it came, but it begins to speak the language of heaven as the Spirit of God. It doesn't have time to argue about whether or not tongue talking is in the Bible. It go ahead and it's filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues and then it grabs me and it grabs somebody quickly and it says get me to the water. Well it's not officially baptism Sunday yet I don't care. I've only got 40 minutes. Get me to the water. Get me to the water and we rush it to the water. We take that old tethered thing and we baptize it in the water in the name of Jesus for the remission of its sins. It comes up and water begins to wash away the old skin and that thing that used to be a frown turns into a smile as joy fills its life it dries off for the time is ticking I've got but minutes left I've got 30 minutes it dries off quickly it doesn't even take the t-shirt it puts its clothes back on and it runs it stops in here on its way out and looks around it won't be here long, for you know. I've got to get, I got some friends, and I got my mom and my dad. They're, they're over there on Bolivar Street. I've got to get to them, and I've got, my, I've got my coworker, and I've got, but on its way out, it stops by a few of you, and it grabs you, and it says, look, I know, I know what it's like, and I know sometimes it's heavy, and I know the pressure of your peers can be so hard, and they tell you you're weird, but I promise you there's nothing too big. It's not too hard. Just you don't want to go where I came from. I know sometimes it'll be difficult, and I know that you'll be different than all the other boys, but Trust me, don't go where I came from. You get in that altar. There's no price. Hey, son, whatever it takes you, you've got to do, you pay it. You don't want to be lost. Whatever you got to do, just whatever you got to do, whatever you have to do, you don't want to be lost. Trust me. You don't want to be lost. Trust me. And then it runs. It runs to the streets of our city. Young, poor, 
tattooed, rich, famous. It doesn't care. It cares nothing but reaching all it can. You don't want to go. You don't want to go. You don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go to hell. But as moving as the story and illustration is, the truth of the matter is, it's fiction. For it will never happen. Never will the char grilled remains of what was be rescued from the damnations of hell, given another opportunity, their fates forever sealed. There will be no char grilled from hell knocking on your door tomorrow saying, Do what's right. There will be no one that comes back from eternity that says, Live holy. There'll be nobody from hell that knocks on your neighbor's door and begs them to live for God. But the one thing they can do is what they do now. Oh, that you could hear them. Oh, that for a minute you could drown out the sounds of earthly pressure and temporal things and you could hear a prayer meeting. A prayer meeting where they don't have to be coerced into lifting their voices. A prayer meeting where they don't have to be pleaded with to stand or attend, but one that rings out forever and ever. And they're praying. I heard them pray for me in my study. They're praying for me now. Preacher, keep preaching it. I've been praying for you. But you need to go back to that part you wrote about in the flames because you didn't do a good enough job. Tell them. Tell them. That's, I know them. I used to work with them. I live next to them. I, I was there. I've been praying that somebody would tell them what you're telling them tonight. All those, all those, those little cute sermons are good, but, but somebody needs to remind them what it's all about. Tell them. I, I, I'm here and I can't get out. But I'm praying for you, Pastor Tuttle. I'm praying for you. Tell them again. Tell them again. Tell them again. So tonight, regardless of your feelings, and it might make you uncomfortable, I've got to answer somebody's prayer from the, from the comfort finds in the constrictions of a damnable hell and I've got to lean across the desk and with every fiber of my being I plead with you please live for God there's somebody in eternity begging you to live for God that holiness is not hard that righteous living is not hard that godliness is not hard stop putting money in front of God stop putting your feelings in front front of your future live for God live for God live for God stop making them beg you to come to church stop making them plead with you to come to the altar live for God repent repent of your sins they asked me to tell you oh if you hear them pray for me surely you can hear them pray for you That's my, that's my cousin that checked you out at Walmart. And you're the, you're the only one that can tell him you work next to him every day at the plant. And you've never invited him to church. That's my son. You're his only hope to keep him out of hell. Please go tell my brothers. Please tell my sister. Please tell Viter. Please tell the girl that checks you out at the grocery store. Tell them that there's somebody that's begging. Let me tell you, somebody's praying for us, Eastgate. This isn't just church versus church. And which one has the best music and which one has the best preaching? This is about people in a damnable hell that scream out through eternity into time saying, please, please, Eastgate, get a burden for the lost please reach your world reach your family reach my family reach my children hey friend I know the night is dark I know the light needs to shine bright but let us not fail to remember for what it shines it shines to rescue a sinner that's bound for hell it shines so that someone can be saved oh that your heart be pricked oh let my heart be stirred if you're lost somebody's praying for you if you're saved somebody's praying praying that you'll tell them come on you work with them every day what have you got to lose invite them 
ask them if they know Jesus. Ask them if they've ever been filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. I wonder if there's a young man or young woman that says, I'll answer a prayer. I'll get up in that altar. I'm going to bow my knee and make up my mind that I'm going to live for God. 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 You ought to find a place at your pew with your face in that carpet and say, God, stir me. Come on, if there's something in your heart against somebody, you need to make it right, you need to make it right. Come on, if there's something in your life that's not right, you need to make it right. I'm not going to go to hell. I'm not going to go to hell. I'm not going to be lost. I'm not going to be lost.